everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning. I guess I need some more coffee or beverage of some sort. I hope that you can grab yourself a coffee or beverage of choice because we are going to hang out together for the next hour or so and talk about all things sewing. If this is your first time watching Sew What, let me know in the comments so that we can welcome you. And if you are a long time watcher uh, of Sew What, thank you for joining yet again. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some fun projects that you can make in the spirit of back to school. Uh, that's right, it's back to school time. If you haven't noticed in the stores, it's all about pencils and papers and notebooks and all of those good things. Um, so we are going to talk about how we can welcome back our teachers for the coming school year. You know, a lot of people actually started school yesterday, which is crazy. Um, I have a couple of weeks to go before my kiddos start school, and some people start right after Labor Day. So I thought we would start now and discuss a couple of quick and easy projects we can make for the teachers in our lives. They would also be great for students, um, those entering college perhaps that need a little gift and a little, you know, um, I don't know, spring in their step as they embark on something new, right? Okay, so these projects can easily be adapted for gifts for anyone, for any occasion. And it's as simple as just swapping out the embroidery design to suit the recipient. So even if you are, um, you know, even if you have no teachers in your life or students in your life, you can still make these projects and take away these techniques and apply them to other things. And also, I will give you some tips on uh, changing up those designs to suit other people and other interests. All right. So a lot of you coming in and saying hello. Hi, Don. Good to see you. Hi, Michelle. All right. So be sure to comment and post your questions in the live chat and in the comment section, whether you are watching on Facebook or YouTube today. I have a great giveaway for one lucky person who is watching, commenting, sharing, engaging with me here on the live stream. And that is our re-release of our holiday 2021 mystery box. That's right. It's not a typo. It's holiday 2021. We brought this mystery box back because we had such an overwhelming response to our 35th anniversary summer mystery box. And in the spirit of Christmas in July, we thought we would bring back our holiday 2020 mystery box for anyone who wasn't able to get it. Because as you know, these mystery boxes sell out in a flash. And once they're gone, they're gone, usually. But we brought back this holiday 2021 mystery box. Only very, very few remain. So get yours while you can. They're only $29.99. They come with over 10, 12, 13, I can't even remember, uh, full-size products, including threads and stabilizers and specialty gifts, um, all kinds of great fun things as you open your box and you can learn how to use new threads, new thread types and weights, um, experiment with some things that maybe you haven't purchased at sulky.com yet and you can kind of learn how to use them and when to use them in your projects. And with purchase of this mystery box, you will also get our Winter Greens Hand Embroidery Collection valued at $9.99 as a thank you gift with purchase. And you'll be able to print that out onto sheets of Sulky Stick and Stitch and use them for lots of upcoming holiday makes and I think you will really, really love it. So I am going to give away one holiday 2021 mystery box to a lucky viewer who is commenting, watching, giving me those great thumbs up and heart emojis. Even if you want to give me those sad emojis, I know we all have those days too, so I'll take them. All right. So that's our giveaway today. And be sure to grab up a mystery box if you still want one. There are only very, very few available um, so be aware that, again, once this one's gone, it really is gone this time. All right. Speaking of back to school, we have some great 
back to school bargains right now at sulky.com up to 30% off selected products. And this sale is going to end midnight on August 8th. Uh, so midnight Pacific time on August 8th. And I went through all the sale items and I really wanted to, you know, there's a lot to choose from and a lot of really, really great deals. But I wanted to call attention to these awesome sports-themed embroider buddies because they are 25% off. I don't think the sale ever gets as good as this. And when we're starting back to school, that's when all of our fall sports start again in full force. And I thought it would be a great idea to bring these uh, embroider buddies to your attention because you can grab them up now personalize them for the littles in your life who are going off to maybe their first soccer camp for fall or starting football um, or even ice hockey. So here are just a sampling of some of those Embroider Buddies. And if you're not familiar with the Embroider Buddies, these are plushies that have a zipper on them and the insert is completely contained inside, much like a pillow, and you pull out the insert and they are specially made so that you can stick them to your embroidery hoop and personalize them. So you can add a name, a monogram, a message, you know, go get them or something like that. Or you can add the team name um, or just some favorite motifs to them. They're quite large. They would make even a good travel pillow um, as well as just a stuffy to hug and love and all of those good things. So this is the football. And there's also a basketball. I have a little one starting basketball in the fall. And we also have a baseball. This one has a large area for embroidery. So it would be great to find an embroidery design maybe for your favorite baseball team and put that on there. Um, there's a lot of uh, licensed embroidery designs for teams and whatnot you can find on Etsy and all kinds of places if you just Google them. You can also add, of course, a monogram, a name, a special note from you. Um, just really, really fun little gift ideas. And here's our soccer ball. Really fun. And possibly one of my favorites, the hockey puck. I know. It looks kind of funny. But... Um, I absolutely love the hockey puck. And if you have, um, you know, perhaps your team won the Stanley Cup uh, this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> yes, I'm from Colorado. All right. So you could embroider your team name. Again, monogram, name, lots of room for embroideries here. You could even embroider the entire uh, team, all the names of the guys and gals on uh, maybe your local team and then gift it to the coach. That would be a really fun um, little gift to make for them. And again, these are 25% off right now, so you can get them at a really, really great deal. You're going to need Sulky Sticky Plus in order to embroider these. And I'm gonna show you the Sticky Plus in action momentarily, but you will also need Sulky Solvi for these plush embroider buddies. The Solvi is a topper that looks like a clear film and you're going to put it over the top, just float it over the top of your item once it is stuck to the sticky plus on the hoop. And the topper is gonna make sure that during embroidery, your thread sits on top of those plush fibers rather than sinking into the pile, okay? so. It'll make your stitches look nice and proud and prominent. Um, and especially if you're doing a name, you need to be able to read the whole thing. So you'll need Sticky Plus and Sulky Solvi for embroidering those embroider buddies. So when you add one of those to your cart, make sure that you have those two stabilizers as well. And again, I'm gonna go through the Sticky Plus momentarily when we get to our teacher tote. Um, which again, you can personalize for anybody in your life or even make one for yourself and put a different design on there that's not teacher related. But we're really going to focus on our teachers today. And if you are a teacher out there, give me a thumbs up, post it in the comments, 
any type of teacher, you know, we should celebrate all year round, but especially when we are starting a new school year, maybe our kids are a little wary of starting a new class or getting to know a new teacher. And it's a great way, it's, you know, a great icebreaker, right, for them to go into a new school um, or a new teacher with a little gifty and a coffee card. And so I thought a mug rug mixed with a coffee card um, would be just such a great icebreaker for your kids to enter on the first day of school in their new classroom with their new teacher. So here is the mug rug I'm going to go over with you today. And you can see it has some piecing, some quilting, and some hand embroidery. Along the little border, it says, inspire, teach, learn. Now, this is where you can personalize this mug rug to say whatever you want it to say. Maybe you want to personalize it with the teacher's name or a different phrase or something totally different altogether. It's entirely up to you what you decide to add for your hand embroidery. You could also skip the hand embroidery and put a very cute fabric print along that border edge. So lots of different ways to make this your own. Now the full instructions for this mug rug, which is designed by Melanie Call, her blog is called A Bit of Scrap Stuff, and she is so great, such a great designer. She's done a number of quilty projects for us here at Sulky, and she loves, loves, loves working with the Sulky 50 weight thread for piecing and quilting. So that's what we're gonna talk about today for the main construction part of the mug rug. And then we're gonna be using the 12 weight cotton petites thread for the hand embroidery. And you all have heard me talk about the cotton petites thread forever, but it's my favorite thing to use for hand embroidery because first off, it comes on a spool. Not only does it come on a spool, it comes on a snap spool, which almost all sulky thread comes on a snap spool, especially if you get this smaller size. So each end, if you gently open it up, I like to do kind of one side at a time, you gently open up either end, you can store your thread end into that snap end and just snap it shut. So you can't do that with floss, am I right? Also, one strand of this thread equals two strands of your traditional embroidery floss. So you're getting greater coverage with just using one strand. So really great for that line art look, which is what we're going to do for the lettering so that you can really see it. And it makes it quicker and easier to embroider. We're just gonna do back stitches for the hand embroidered lettering so it comes together really easily. You know, a lot of the times we think of handwork and we think, oh, it's gonna take forever, right? Well, this is a quick and easy hand embroidery accent and you get that thick, nice coverage with the 12 weight thread. Okay, so let's get to constructing this. First off, we get to pick fabrics. And like I mentioned, Melanie Call of A Bit of Scrap Stuff designed this for Sulky. And, you know, it's all about diving into your scrap bin and finding great fabrics that work together. Um, you could certainly go with fabrics from the same collection so that everything coordinates really nicely or just have fun with it and get scrappy and just pull out some fabric prints from your stash. And really, the largest amount of fabric that you need is that A fabric. That A fabric is going to be our background, right, for this star block. It's also going to be our rectangle border piece and the backing piece for the mug rug. So that's the one that you need the most of. And then these other little triangles um, can kind of be whatever you want them to be. Um, and I was going to mention that all the instructions for this are on the blog at blog.sulky.com. I also linked directly to the blog post in the description of today's uh, live stream post. So if you're not seeing everything I'm gonna talk about today, it's a big description, click on the little see more button. The entire description will pop out. You'll find links for everything I'm gonna talk about today, including a link that will go directly to the blog post to give you all the 
dimensions for cutting, all the instructions, all the quilting, all the embroidery, everything that you need. Okay, so, and yes, Denise says, great way to use up scraps. We all need those, right? Okay, so once you've chosen your fabrics, we're going to start the piecing. And first we're going to add um, the little corner snipes, the little corner pieces to build our star block. So first we have that A fabric square and you're going to add one of the B fabric squares to it along the left corner. And you're going to sew down that line to create that little corner. Then you're going to add a B square to the right, the lower right corner and sew along that line. Then you press everything to the right side and you have the beginnings of your star block. So it comes together really simply, quickly and easily. If you've never made a block like this or you're new to quilting, this is a really great project to start. You could even get the kids involved in making the mug rug for the teacher because this is such a great starter project or entry into the world of sewing and quilting. All right, so now we have the center part of our top row of the entire quilt block that we're going to make. And then you can see we've got two more of the A fabric squares that we are piecing along those left and right edges of the tiny block that we just created. So now we have the entire top row of our nine patch block, okay? So now we've got to build the middle row and the bottom row. The bottom row is exactly like the top row, just flipped upside down. So here is what the middle row looks like. You can see we've got that same center block. We've just oriented it differently, rotated it, and then we've got another B fabric square in the center. So this is going to be our middle row of our nine patch block. All right, so now we've got six and then you add your third row, which creates nine blocks. Then you piece together your rows. So we've got that top row, middle row and bottom row. And there you have it. You honestly cannot get easier than creating this quilt block. And it looks very impressive when you choose a different fabric for each part of the star. All right, so very fun, super quick and easy, and it allows you to kind of really experiment with quilting stitches. So after this part, you're going to add that border piece, which is going to give it that mug rug shape, right? Right now we have basically like a coaster shape. When you add a little bit more onto it, making it more of a rectangle, that's where you get a mug rug. Now, people might be asking, what is a mug rug and how does it differ from a coaster? Well, it really just means that it's rectangular and it's larger than a coaster. So a mug rug is meant to not only uh, hold your mug, but also a little treat beside it. So that's what our little border piece is for. It's also really great for adding embellishments. So all you will do is add that rectangular piece to the right edge or the left edge. It doesn't really matter because this is gonna look the same, um, upside down, right side up, all of those good things. So once you've added that, now you can add your hand embroidery. And um, on the blog post, you will notice that there are a few different ways that Melanie says you can do the hand embroidery and any which one of them is gonna work perfectly. My preferred way is to either write or print out my phrase right onto a sheet of Sulky Stick and Stitch Stabilizer. And I thought I had a piece right next to me. This always happens. It's an afterthought, right, for me to bring this to you. So Stick and Stitch comes in eight and a half by 11 sheets and you can run them through your home printer. It doesn't matter what type of printer you have, inkjet, laser, it works on both. You want to set your printer for the lowest ink setting. Sometimes it's called the draft setting. 
and print your phrase or design. And you can simply go into your word processing program and find a font that you like, size it appropriately for the area that you have for embroidery on that little rectangle, and print out your letters right onto the stick and stitch. So you'll put this in your printer with the fabric-like side facing up. So facing, so it'll print on it, right? Sometimes it'll, it'll vary um, based on your type of printer. Um, let's see, I was gonna actually show you a piece of it. Okay, so here I have one that has been printed with one of the embroidery designs uh, that we feature at sulky.com. This is our uh, boho floral design, our large corner boho floral design, which incidentally would look great on your tote bag that I'm gonna show you momentarily because it has this corner to it that you can put on the corner of a bag. So it's kind of cool like that. At any rate, I printed this in color. You can print in color or black and white on the draft setting right on to the fabric side or the fabric like side. You can see um, it has kind of a fabricy texture to it. Then you will kind of cut around the design, leaving yourself a little bit of a border. And then you will stick your sticker that you just made right on to your fabric. So this is one, I actually stuck it to the paper side, the paper release sheet, but this is the other boho floral design and it's stuck right to the paper. You will stick it right to your fabric right side and stitch through all layers. You can use whatever embroidery stitches you prefer to use and it's such a great product. It washes away entirely when your embroidery is complete. So in the case of this mug rug, you can leave it intact until you have added your batting, your quilting stitches, your backing, and totally finished it. Leave that stick and stitch in place, and then you can just throw it in the washing machine and all of the stick and stitch will be removed once you get it out of the washing machine. It'll be totally gone. If you don't wanna throw it in your washing machine, you can simply remove it by running it under running water. And just tap water, lukewarm, or on a little bit warmer side. I've even done it in cool water. Um, it just takes a little bit longer in cooler water, um, but it still works. You just don't want to uh, let it sit in the water um, waiting for it dissolve, to dissolve. You wanna give it a little bit of agitation and if you happen to have like a kitchen sprayer with really great water pressure, that works really well to kind of flush the stabilizer off of the fabric um, and completely dissolve there in your sink. Um, it's so wonderful and the greatest transfer method because nothing is left behind. You have no markings that you have to cover up or restitch or try spot remover on. It's just totally gone when you're done. So after you do that, just let your fabric dry flat on a towel and then once it's dry give it a little bit of press pressing from the wrong side and then you'll finish with the construction of the mug rug that is if you don't want to throw it in the washing machine when you're done another way to transfer your embroidery is by using sulky iron-on transfer pens i like iron-on transfer pens especially if I'm doing a satin stitch type of design or something that has more of a stitch fill to it because the color of the iron-on transfer pen is permanent. So if I miss a little bit or my stitches aren't as um, perfectly spaced or um, you know the perfect length next to each other, if I'm doing a long and short stitch or a satin stitch, the color of the iron-on transfer pen kind of um, makes up for that, right? Because you're gonna see the color of the pen um, underneath the stitches, wherever your stitches didn't cover. So I like it for that reason. Now, with an iron-on transfer pen, you wanna follow the instructions that come with your pack of pens. Um, you need to get the ink kind of started by pushing the tip in a little bit um, on, you know, like a scrap piece of paper or something like that. 
And then you also need to remember, especially if you're doing a lettering design, to write it backwards, the mirror image of it, so that when you go to transfer your design on the fabric right side using heat from an iron, it reads properly. So using a light box, we have really great light boxes at sulky.com. Um, I have mine over here, but it's a little bit out of reach. They are called wafer thin light boxes. And just like the name suggests, they are wafer thin. Um, mine fits like right next to my uh, bookcase that's right here, um, just like a folder. I mean, and it has light adjustments. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent, but they're really awesome. So a light box works great if you want to draw the phrase or name um, in the right way and then uh, turn it, you know, to mirror image it on a light box and then write it backwards with your iron on transfer pen. That works great to transfer that to your fabric right side. So you can also uh, do that method if you prefer for transferring your designs. All right, let's see where we are. So this is our completed top without the embroidery. You're going to you uh, to add the hand embroidery of your choice, um, and then it's as simple as quilting it together and adding the backing piece. Now. This is constructed much like, let's say, a pillow where we will put our backing on our quilted front uh, with right sides facing, sew the perimeter, leaving an opening, turn it right side out, give it a good press, make sure that we've clipped those corners and pushed them out using a point turner, and then just hand sewing the opening shut or top stitching the entire mug rug to finish. So the quilting is not done with the backing on it. Um, you can add your quilting at this point, put a small piece of batting behind the mug rug after you've done your hand embroidery, and then add your quilting stitches. So Melanie likes to use the sulky 50 weight cotton thread for the quilting, especially for something like this. It kind of blends into the background a little bit more because it's such a lighter weight thread. Um, so if you want your quilting to pop, you can actually use that 12 weight cotton petites to do some quilting around your star um, or even add some running stitches with the hand quilted look. Uh, so lots of different options for the quilting. And then after you do your quilting is where when you will add your backing, turn it right side out and simply top stitch it. If you wanted to instead quilt this with the backing and add a very narrow binding to it so it truly is like a mini quilt, you can certainly do that as well. But this is just a very quick and easy way of finishing the mug rug so you can send your students off uh, to welcome back their teachers um, quickly and easily and using up your favorite scraps. All right, so that's project number one, our Inspire, Teach, Learn teacher mug rug. And now I'm going to go over our teacher tote bag with you. Um, again, you can change up the design to suit anybody or yourself, your interests and the motifs that you love. So before we get to the teacher tote, I'm going to go through and make sure um, make sure I have a handle on the questions from everyone. Gail says, I only use sulky thread. Works so well. Thank you, Gail. And Judy says, you can quilt it after flipping so that you see it on the backing. That is true as well. If you turn it to the right side, add your top stitching to close your opening. You can add some quilting then as well, especially if you do hand work or hand quilting, I should say, um, to kind of mimic the hand embroidery that you've added to the piece. Oh, and everyone, Melanie is with us, our designer of the project. Yay. Yay, everybody give a shout out to Melanie. She designed that beautiful mug rug and love, love, love working with her. And please go check out her blog. Again, it's called A Bit of Scrap Stuff, and she has really great projects. 
All right, Denise says, I have an iron-on transfer pen in my stash. There you go. Okay, Leslie wants to know, where do we find the hockey puck? So again, our sports embroider buddies are on sale right now. So this is the hockey puck, really fun, plushy hockey puck. Again, it makes a great kind of travel pillow as well as a fun stuffy. And you can find these at sulky.com. If you click on our back to school sale, um, once you head on over to sulky.com, you'll find this. Click on that and you'll find all the bargains, including the great sports buddies that I talked about at the beginning of today's episode. So you can find those at sulky.com on sale um, until August 8th at midnight Pacific time. All right. Okay, let's see. Sharon has downloaded the mug rug tutorial. Perfect. You're ready to go. And Denise, great idea. She says this would make a nice start for a table topper too. Exactly. You could use that small block design and make several of them and make yourself a little quilt, a little table runner, a placemat set. Um, it's a great tutorial for a basic quilt block. Um, and so useful for so many things. You can also um, create that as sort of an applique and put that on your tote bag blank. So I'm sure all of you have so many tote bags that you get for promotional things, um, maybe even from the grocery store that have a logo on them or a motif that we don't really love, but maybe we love the bag. You could add this cute little nine patch quilt block as an applique over the top to hide the ugly motif or logo from the tote bag. Um, or perhaps you have um, a tote bag pattern that you really love. Tote bags are so easy to create because you just need a front and back square or rectangle and then you need two strap rectangles and you've got yourself a tote bag. So again, dive into your stash, see if you have a neutral fabric that you can create. Tote bags can be any size. They can be super large for a library tote. They can be a little bit smaller to just hold your essentials. Um, so I think a tote bag is a great thing to gift for a teacher. And you can find tote bag blanks as well. They don't have to be lined either because we're just using a quick and easy tote. Um, they don't have to be super fancy. And the this project will be coming out on the blog. I just wanted to give you a sneak peek of it today. Since we're talking about back to school, I thought it was very fitting. All right, so if you don't have a tote bag blank or an existing tote bag that you can add embroidery to, um, you can certainly just make one quickly and easily, again, with a couple of fabric squares or rectangles and some strapping or webbing, or you can make your own straps out of some rectangle strips of fabric. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to assume our tote bag is already made. And these are the same um, hooping instructions that you will use for those embroider buddies that I talked about previously, those sporty sports embroider blanks. So first things first, here is what our teacher tote looks like. And the design that I used um, is from Bunny Cup Embroidery. And I believe, yes. And I linked directly to the entire teacher inspired collection in uh, the description of today's post, I believe. If I did not, I will add it shortly. I can't remember if I added it or not. Um, but at any rate, this will also be on the blog in the coming days. Uh, so you'll be able to get the full instructions. So really cute. You can find teacher themed embroidery designs um, all over the place. We have a really great wordplay teacher embroidery design that has the look of cross stitch, but it's all done by your embroidery machine. You could use that on your tote bag. So lots of different options, apples, books, reading, and, you know, reading themed designs would make a great library tote. So you could see just how simple this tote bag blank is. Very thin. It's just made out of like almost like a thicker muslin uh, fabric with just some simple straps. The corners aren't even boxed, you know, super simple. 
Um, yet it's very impactful, you know, when you give this to your teacher and when they're going to and from their car with papers to grade and all kinds of things, they need all the tote bags they can get. <laughs> okay. All right. So after you add the design of your choice into your embroidery machine, you're going to choose the function that allows you to base around the design. And this is going to be our placement tool for making sure that our design is right in the center of our tote bag. And you could see that was a very large scale embroidery design. So if you only have a four by four hoop or you don't have the largest hoop um, to make a big statement on your tote bag, a smaller design is going to look just as good. And you can even embroider it on a corner along the upper edge. You could use a design like this one I showed you previously that I printed onto stick and stitch. This is the handwork version of this design, but we also have it as a machine embroidery design file. So this is, again is also a large scale design. This is printed out on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. But if you have a smaller uh, hoop parameters to consider, just choose the design that works with your machine and this based around design function is really, really great as a placement tool. But if you have the little snowman stickers or if you have placement stickers or if your machine has a fancy camera that allows you to position your design perfectly um, once you've got your hoop already on your machine, by all means, use the placement tool and technique that works best for you. This is what works best for me when I am explaining tutorials um, so that anybody with any machine is able to uh, perfectly place their designs. So if your machine does not have a based around design or perimeter based function, those are two different things. Perimeter based around the hoop uh, will give you the hoop parameter line and basting around the design just bastes around the design perimeter so it's a smaller, more accurate tool for placing your item in the hoop. If you don't have these, you can print out a template of your design. I also like to print out a template of my design onto Sulky Stick and Stitch, place that right onto my fabric, and then I can use that and walk the needle a couple of stitches to make sure that it's going to stitch out exactly where I want it to. And then you can either remove your Stick and Stitch uh, template or you can leave it on there, embroider the whole design, and then wash it away once it's completed. All right, lots of different ideas and ways to achieve perf perfect placement out there, I'm sure. So like I said, this is a very large scale design. Um, I think I used a 260 by 200 hoop for it. Um, but depending on the size of your tote that you're either creating or that you have as a tote blank, um, you can design, you can size your design appropriately. I made this one even bigger and went all the way to my hoop edge um, before it turned red and told me it was too large for the hoop. So I just clicked and dragged to enlarge my design as far as it would go um, within that hoop. Okay, so this is the method you're going to use if you grab up one of those sports embroider buddies. Um, however, with those, we're going to do the additional layer of Sulky Solvi once we've got the item onto our Sticky Plus. So I'll go over that as well. But for the tote blank, um, this is also a method that you will use for most embroidery blanks because um, a lot of the times the fabric is either plushy or, you know, a heavyweight canvas or it's a napkin or a collar or a zipper pouch, something that we can't even get in the hoop. So we are going to do what I call hoopless embroidery, meaning we are not hooping the item itself, we're only hooping the stabilizer, and then we're going to stick our item to it. So first off, we're going to hoop our Sulky Sticky Plus with the paper side facing up. The Sticky Plus is a tearaway adhesive backed sticky stabilizer. So when our embroidery is complete, it's going to tear away completely beyond all of our stitches, leaving no trace behind. So Sticky Plus in the hoop with the paper side facing up, 
You can see there's also a grid printed on the paper, which is another great placement aid for us. So when you're hooping it, match up your grid to the markings on your inner hoop ring, and you can also use that for a placement guide for your item that you're embroidering. So to remove the paper backing so that we can reveal the adhesive and stick our item to it, we're going to use the Sticky Plus Slitting Pen. Now, many of you are probably familiar with this product because I talk about it all the time. It is the best thing to happen to the embroidery world. <laughs> and once I discovered it, uh, I'll just never go back. Now, I used to um, use a pin to score the paper backing and then tear it away to reveal the adhesive. But more times than not, I would accidentally pierce through the stabilizer as well, creating a little slit or sometimes even removing it entirely with my heavy handedness on that pin. Now the slitting pen has a very sharp point to it I usually always have it right next to me, but as usual, I have used it and moved it somewhere. Um, but at any rate, here we go. It has a very sharp point on it. See how it's got this little protective um, thing on it. And you can see a very sharp point to it, but it's not sharp enough to go through the stabilizer itself. It only slices through that paper backing. Don't ask me how, but it does. So you will run your slitting pen along those gridded lines and remove the paper backing to reveal the adhesive and leaving the stabilizer intact in the hoop. So if you don't have one of these already, make sure to add it to your cart because you will thank me for it. How many of you out there have purchased one in the past because you have seen me use it? Because I guarantee it is a life changer if you do a lot of machine embroidery. All right, Jennifer says, I love my slitting pen. Betty has never heard of it. So Betty, grab yourself one. You're going to absolutely love it. Denise says, very useful. Leslie loves it. Pamela says she needs one. All right, so we are all on board team slitting pen. <laughs> all right, so now you're gonna remove that paper backing and you can see the sticky part of my stabilizer is in the hoop and I've placed my hoop onto the machine and I have performed that design perimeter basting function right onto my sticky stabilizer. And yes, it is sticky, but Put in a new needle, as you should with any new embroidery project. And if you're worried about it getting a little bit sticky, you can use a little bit of Sewer's Aid. We have it at sulky.com. It's a little bottle, maybe two ounces or so. It's a water-based lubricant that you can place on your needle um, for easier threading, whether you're doing handwork or machine work. It also helps if you're sewing uh, metallic thread. It helps that metallic thread glide through the needle eye, especially during high speed embroidery. You can also just put a tiny little dab on your finger, run it down the length of the needle and do your perimeter based function and you will get no sticky residue on your needle. Now I find, you know, I'll do this sometimes, sometimes not. Um, and you know, I don't have a problem with my needle gumming up for the rest of the stitch out. But if you're concerned about that, the Sewer's Aid is great. Very inexpensive little thing. A bottle is gonna last you months and months and months, if not years. So a little dab will do ya. All right, so perform that perimeter basting function or do the placement technique of your choice. And now we've gotta get our item stuck to the stabilizer. So in order to make sure that my design is going to stitch in the proper place, I folded my tote in half widthwise, put it onto the stabilizer, matching up that fold line with my hoop markings. Then I 
unfold my tote and you can kind of fold back the top or bottom. You might want to adjust your design higher or lower depending on if your tote has boxed corners um, or what type of thing you are embroidering. Once you've flattened it out, ooh, I should mention too, right now the tote is wrong side out, okay? And you can see I've got both sides of my tote are in the hoop, but obviously I only want to sew through the front side of the tote. So right now it's wrong side out so that I can place the front on the hoop. Now I'm going to maneuver the back of the tote away from the stitching field. And it's almost going to look like I am embroidering in a little tunnel. Okay, so you'll pull back the back part of the tote. Now you're looking at the right side of the tote front and you're working inside a little bit of a tunnel. So here you can see my tunnel. I've moved away the back side of the tote. I have the front of my tote right side up facing the needle and I'm ready to begin the stitch out. Now you need to be sure that you are ready with your finger or your foot or however you start and stop your embroidery machine so that you can start and stop the stitch out if your needle gets too close to part of the tote that you have pulled away from the stitching field. And I'll show you what I mean because again, this is a very large scale design and I wanted it to span almost the entire tote front. So can you see how part of this design, this is the part of the design that says is my, it says teaching is my thing. So the is my stitches out first along the center. You can see the I and part of the S of is my is underneath a little bit of the back of the tote that I've moved away from the stitching path. So I had to start and stop my machine during the stitch out and maneuver some of the tote fabric so that it could stitch each portion of the design without that excess fabric getting caught in the stitching. So with high speed embroidery, you really need to sit at your machine, watch where it's moving and where the hoop is going. So you can start and stop, pull back your fabric. You might have to move other fabric over an area you've already sewn so that you can reach other areas of the design. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Give me a thumbs up, okay. Linda says, can you clamp away the areas that don't get embroidered? So in certain instances, you certainly can. And some uh, hoops and some hoops come with hoop clamps um, for quilts, heavier items that you want to kind of control a little bit better during the stitch out. However, with this tote, since we have to move areas of the tote away during the stitch out, I just wouldn't recommend trying to clamp it because it's going to stretch it um, a little bit out of shape. Um, and like I said, some projects are, are certainly conducive to clipping it around. If you have enough fabric that it's not going to pull or drag or stretch um, during the stitch out, then you can do that. But for this, since I have to move it so much, um, there isn't enough room for me to clip it all out of place. Um, it would allow, it would, it would move some of that excess fabric into the stitching path, um, regardless of where I clipped it. And we wanna make sure it's nice and flat, no pulling, um, no, no stretching that might even be, not be seen by the naked eye because we don't want puckering um, after our stitch out is complete. Okay. All right, Jennifer says, I use a product from Dime called a hoop guard. Okay, perfect. And Linda says, what about using a magnetic hoop? Um, I have every confidence that a magnetic hoop would work for this. And actually, I am about to get some magnetic hoops uh, so that I can show them off in some tutorials because we do get this question quite a bit. Um, and so the great folks at Dime Designs and Machine Embroidery um, are sending me some magnetic hoops so that I can show them off 
and show you how to best utilize them. So definitely be on the lookout for these tutorials coming up. And I can't, can't wait to experiment with them. I've never used them before. And people often ask me, can I use a magnetic hoop for this, that, and the other thing? Um, so I have every confidence that you can. Um, it's just, I haven't done it myself yet. All right. Let's make sure that we are caught up on the questions. Oh, Jennifer says, I got sewer's aid in one of my mystery boxes. Thanks, Sulky. Perfect. See, sometimes you get some things in your mystery box that maybe you wouldn't have purchased previously. Then you get to use it and fall in love with it and understand, you know, how this makes your sewing easier, better, and more fun. And that's what it's all about. All right. So let's move forward if I can find my place here. You can see here I've added some more photos just so you can see how I've had to maneuver my little tunnel to stitch each kind of portion of the design. And if your design is all one color or just two colors or three like this one, um, it's not going to stop for you uh, during the stitch out. It'll only stop at those color changes. So you need to be ready to stop your machine at any time to make sure that you don't have, um, you know, needle penetrations where you don't want them. So when your embroidery is complete, you will simply remove your hoop from the machine and then remove your stabilizer from the hoop and start tearing it away. So this was just my initial tear away of the uh, project. And this is the wrong side, of course. And you can see how much stabilizer is left. It's very helpful, especially with a lettering design or a more intricate design where there are lots of thread changes to clip your jump threads on the back of the project as well as the front of the project. And I like to use my handy curved tip squeezers. I talk about these all the time as well. I'm wondering if there's a so what where I haven't talked about these. These have a little curved tip to them. So you can see when you're clipping jump threads, the uh, tip of the squeezers doesn't nick your fabric. And sometimes when we're in there clipping all these jump threads while our project is in the hoop, we can accidentally clip through our fabric and then we have tragedy. So these curved tips allow us to get in there and get really close um, to clipping those jump threads without nicking the thread or the fabric underneath. Plus they're very ergonomic and easily uh, squeezed um, so that they don't hurt our hands. So really great. Another inexpensive little notion you can get at sulky.com to make your life easier. So go ahead and clip those jump threads on the wrong side so that we can tear away all those bits of stabilizer and the thread isn't getting caught. You know, our jump threads isn't getting caught um, in the stabilizer. That way we can get a nice, clean looking wrong side um, and it looks almost as pretty as it does on the front. Okay. So after you've removed your stabilizer, give it a little bit of a press from the wrong side. Try to avoid the stitching if possible. And then you have your finished tote. It's as easy as that. So again, if you grabbed up one of those sports embroider buddies or if you're going to because they're on super duper sale today, um, this is the same method of embroidering, you know, hoopless embroidery for those embroidery blanks. You can do this on any embroidery blank using that sticky plus and your sticky plus slitting pen. Now, when you do an embroider buddy, you will have the additional need for Sulky Solvi, our uh, film-like topper, which is going to ensure that our threads don't sink in to that plushy fabric. That's what you would use on cuddle, on um, uh, velvet, velour, even corduroy with a high pile, um, terry cloth, towels. Um, you need a topper to avoid your threads just sinking in to those fabric loops and that fabric pile. So after you have centered your item in the hoop or wherever you want your design to be, you will float a sheet of Sulky Solvi, just the regular Solvi, not Ultra or Super Solvi, regular Solvi on top. And you can do a per, another perimeter based 
um, to secure your solvy in the hoop before you do your embroidery, or you can actually secure it with the KK2000 Temporary Spray Adhesive, another one of my favorite Sulky products. This is our Air Soluble Temporary Spray Adhesive. It dissipates in the air over time, and even though Sulky dissolve, or Solvi dissolves in water, it doesn't dissolve with the KK2000. So you wanna put the KK on the Solvi and then put the Solvi on your project. Um, I find that when I go to wash away the Solvi um, after the embroidery is complete, the KK goes with the Solvi if I spray the Solvi first. If I spray the item and then put my Solvi over the top, then I've got to wash away the Solvi or the, the adhesive from the project itself. And it's a little more tacky um, than it would be if I sprayed the Solvi rather than spraying the project. So just kind of what I have found with my experience. I don't know about your experience with Solvi, um, but also if you need a more permanent bond with the KK and you're worried about the Solvi shifting during the stitch out um, and you don't want to do the perimeter based or you don't have that function on your machine, you can spray both the Solvi and the product project and then put the Solvi in place and you'll get a more permanent bond um, even though it's temporary and it's going to uh, dissipate in the air once you have removed the topper. Okay, Susie is asking, does the spray gum up the needle? It does not. Uh, in my experience, which I have used it so often, um, it's never gummed up my needle. But again, if you are concerned about that with using the Sticky Plus and the addition of the KK2000, um, you can use a little bit of that sewer's aid on your needle, a tiny dab will do ya. Just put it on the uh, needle itself um, and you won't have that problem. Um, you can also clean it off periodically if you do notice that there's a little bit of residue or that your needle is kind of gunking up a little bit. Either change, <clears throat> excuse me, change your needle or a little bit more sewer's aid. You can put it on your finger, a little Q-tip, um, a little, again, goes a long way. All right. So there we have it. Our teacher, uh, welcome back teacher project duo. So I hope you make one or both of these things and find a worthy teacher to gift them to. Maybe you have a neighbor who, who is a teacher or excuse me, I need a beverage. <laughs> Maybe you have a neighbor who's a teacher or a daughter who's a teacher or you're a teacher yourself. You deserve it as well. All right. Let's just make sure we are caught up on the questions. And Martha says, I finally tried the KK2000 and love it. All right. That deserves a round of applause. I love hearing people use things for the first time and knowing that it does have the same effect on you and your creative process as it does for me. All right. Another thing I wanna let you all know about is our Candy Corn Clutch webcast. You know, it was funny, as soon as it turned August 1st, all of a sudden, the world started celebrating Halloween. And, you know, Halloween will be upon us before we know it. And Halloween is one of my absolute favorite holidays to sew for because we get to go out of our comfort zone and make some really crazy things and work with specialty threads that have great uh, special effects. You know, Sulky Glowy Thread is one of my favorites, and it's actually featured on this project. Uh, Sulky Metallics, the Poly Sparkle, um, all kinds of, you know, purples and golds and greens and oranges. And I just absolutely love Halloween. Can you tell? Um, I try to make at least one portion, if not the whole thing, of my children's costumes every year. It's like just a memory making experience and a great, you know, way to get them into the sewing and creative process as well. Um, so at any rate, absolutely love Halloween. And we have the fantastic Sue a very Pruitt of Suki Sews will be joining us on August 16th 
at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So in about two weeks, uh, Sue will be joining us for the In the Hoop Candy Corn Clutch free webcast. Sue is going to take us through this amazingly cute project. You can use it as a clutch for a Halloween party. You can gift it to the littles in your life. You can fill it with candy. You can even gift it to the teachers in your life. Put some cute Halloween pencils and stickers in there that they can use for grading their papers. Um, so all kinds of great uses for this little clutch. It comes in two sizes. If you make the smaller size, it fits in a five by seven hoop. If you make the larger size, you will need an eight by eight or a nine by 10 hoop. All right, and we're gonna build this entirely in the hoop of our embroidery machine. So we of course have curated a kit for this webcast as well. And in the kit, you will get the Candy Corn Clutch in the Hoop Design Collection. This includes the uh, files for both sizes, as well as the bonus file to create that adorable little candy corn charm. You can use this to decorate the zipper on your clutch. You can use it to make a keychain. You can use it to put on a backpack for a student for Halloween. There's a little bit of glowy thread around it, so it glows in the dark and super, super fun. So this entire thing is made, the outside of it, with sulky felty. So in the kit, you will get the design files. You will also get three sheets of sulky felty in the white, orange, and yellow that you need to create your candy corn. You also get some black Kona cotton, which is our lining fabric, because the entire thing is lined perfectly great and looking nice on the inside. You also get two zippers, so you can create two candy corn clutches, and you get six snap spools of sulky thread. Various threads here, you'll get some glowy, you'll get some poly deco, you'll get some bobbin thread. So you have everything you need to create a really, really cute um, pouch or two. You'll also get a jump ring set that you need for your little candy corn charm. And then there's two types of stabilizers involved. So you get two one yard packs of Sulky Stabilizer, the Soft and Cheer and the Tear Easy. And then you'll get a pack of Oregon Embroidery Needles. So everything you need to create a couple of candy corn pouches. So be sure to join us in a couple weeks, August 16 at 2 p.m. Eastern time for the Candy Corn Clutch webcast. We will be going live with Sue Overy Pruitt on our education platform. Our education platform is sewingonline.sulky.com, not to be confused with sulky.com. So they are two different websites. Sulky.com is where you're going to buy your kit and sewingonline.sulky.com is where you're going to register and watch the webcast in its entirety. And our education platform, if you've never done an event with us, which give me a thumbs up if you have done an event with us in the past. I recognize a lot of your names and I think some of you are even door prize winners from the past because we have door prizes throughout the event. We have live Q&A sessions. You will watch Sue uh, take you through this project from start to finish. You have the opportunity to ask questions directly to the designer and digitizer herself. So it's like taking a free class in the comfort of your own home on our very interactive uh, sewing education site. And when you get to the event page after you register, <clears throat> there's also a place to download a free design from Suki Sews. So Sue has provided this really beautiful fall acorn design that you can use for a lot of different projects, maybe even on a tote bag. Um, to celebrate the coming of fall, and you'll get that absolutely free just for registering for the event. So lots of bonuses to make sure that you register, even if you can't join us live on the 16th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So if you can't join live, be sure to register anyway, because then you will be able to grab up your freebie. And once the event ends, you can go back and watch it at your leisure at any time that's convenient for you. So lots of bonuses to joining us for our free education event on August 16th at 2 p.m. Eastern. All right, 
Erlene says, I'm already signed up. I'll see you there. Jennifer says, I love that you can rewatch the webinars. And I got lots of thumbs up when I asked who has joined us um, in the past. Okay, Nyla says, I got my kit in the mail the other day. So I'm ready for Candy Corn Clutch. And I should mention, um, the kit is already on sale. We always put the kit on sale so that you can grab it up at a screaming deal before the event. The kit price will go to retail price um, uh, at midnight the day of the event um, or until it sells out, whichever comes first. So kind of like our mystery boxes that I talked about earlier, our webcast kits can go really fast too. So you want to make sure to grab one, especially if you want it before the webcast goes live, which it's not intended to be a traditional sew along. We're not expecting you to keep up um, with the project as we walk through it. But that's the great thing about being able to rewatch it, right? So if your kit comes later or if you have trouble keeping up, which again, we're not expecting you to, uh, you can go back once the live event ends and play, pause, fast forward, rewind, all while you're working your way through the project. And you can watch on your phone, you can watch on a tablet, or you can watch on your computer. So lots of different options. Sometimes people even stream it to their TVs so they can see it really, really large if you happen to have a big TV in your sewing space, or you can move your, your machine uh, to where you have a TV, and then you can watch while you sew, and it's just a great opportunity. All right, and speaking of that mystery box, again, you know, that is our giveaway today, our re-release of our holiday, oops, that's not it, that's a football, our re-release of our holiday 2021 mystery box. I talked about this at the top of today's episode, but if you happen to miss it, this is our giveaway for one lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, sharing, engaging with the post in some way today. Um, I will be choosing somebody at random uh, to win our holiday 2021 mystery box re-release. We brought this one back to the website and curated all the items again for you um, for our Christmas in July happenings. And if you didn't get a chance to grab one up last holiday season, now is your chance to get it while supplies last. They're telling me we have very, very few available now since the top of today's show. So be sure to grab one while you can. They're only $29.99. And incidentally, our candy corn clutch kit is only $39.99 on sale from about $60. So if you grab up a candy corn clutch kit, you can grab up your holiday 2021 mystery box at the same time and be on your way to free shipping. All right. So lots of you all saying, um, that you love candy corn. <laughs> you either love or hate candy corn, right? But it's really cute to wear it as a little clutch um, or gift it away to uh, somebody to celebrate Halloween. Um, so yeah, lots of people saying great giveaway. I would love to have the box. Um, and Linda, great to hear it. She says, I love the last mystery box I got. It's really fun putting them together and, you know, some of the contents could differ between boxes. And it's so fun for me, too, because sometimes they send me a mystery box and I get to open it up and show you all the contents. And it's just really it feels like you're gifting yourself something and we deserve it. Am I right? We certainly do. All right. Terry says, I love candy corn all year long. All right. That deserves another round of applause. <laughs> I hope you'll join us, Terry, on August 16th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And in the meantime, thank you all for joining me today. Again, to all of you who are watching for the very first time, I thank you so much for spending a little bit of your afternoon with me here on So What. And for all of you who have been watching since the beginning, I appreciate you so, so much. And thank you as well. Little party noise. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. I look forward to speaking with you next week on another So What and joining you at sewingonline.sulky.com on August 16th for our Candy Corn webcast. So be sure to register, grab up your kit, and I'll see you then and see you next week. 
Have a great rest of your day.